As promised, this is the companion piece to the main Moondrop May review. Uh, this video will basically cover the DSP features of the Moondrop May using the Moondrop Link app. So if you haven't checked it out, go to the Moondrop May review and then come back here for the DSP stuff. With that, let's get him out of the way. Let's begin. Okay, so to access the Maze DSP, you're going to need the Moondrop Link app, which sadly, the newest version cannot be found on Google Play Store. You're going to have to go to their website for that. And the newest version as of this recording is currently 2.0.0. So when you fire it up, the app is first of all going to ask for access to the Moondrop May USB. Click OK on that going to ask you for the language of course I'll be using English there's a privacy policy which I skip over because I think most of you will as well so now it's going to ask you for quite frankly <laughs> way more permissions than I'm willing to give for an app like this but sure I'll let it use everything it needs oh it also asks you for Bluetooth despite the fact that we don't have any Bluetooth thing this this is kind of a thing with sort of all of these like audio management apps. If you use like the Galaxy wearable suite, it'll also ask for your Bluetooth. So yeah, I guess you'll have to allow it for this one. Turn on the Bluetooth. There you go. After all that setup, you're going to be into the device selection screen. So if you have a uh, Neko Cake, Space Travels, the, the Sparks, the uh, Little White, the Alice, uh, it'll also show up here. Also, there's like a top banner here with like promotion pictures of their products, which, okay, cool. So click on that box. It asks you for more stuff, you know, very worrying. It asks for access to photos and media on your device, but I guess we're implying file access. So sure, okay. There you go. Now you're into the May and you'll be greeted with a selection of five presets, which we'll get to in a bit. That's the preset EQ. To the left here, you'll get your parametric equalizer, which allows for changing nine bands of frequencies with the gain ranging from uh, plus three decibels to minus 12 decibels. And you cannot enter decimal values for the gain. Sadly, it'll just remove the decimal value. But with the Q curve, you can enter decimal values and it'll range from 0.2 to 10. So if you leave all the PEQ settings at their default, this is actually not the default. Um, this is like some other PEQ preset here, but by default, it should be at like zero decibels everything and the Q should be at one for everything. So if you leave it all at the default, it basically gives you the raw output of the May through the, through the DAC of the DSP cable, of course, which is similar to basically plugging the May in with a 3.5 millimeter output. With the limited boosting you can do, you know, only three decibels, but you get minus 12 decibels of uh, negative gain. I think Moondrop is probably trying to steer you forward to you know, learning to do subtractive EQ instead of additive EQ, which is a good thing, but I feel like this is a technical limitation of the DSP in the May and free DSP itself. But, uh, you know, it could be considered a good thing, I guess, because, you know, when you do subtractive EQ, uh, it alleviates on clipping. Still, though, I wish the UI for the parametric EQ was more uh graphic what i mean is that uh if you've seen the parametric ui of the audio technica connect app uh, it gives a better visualization of your q curve and gain levels in a much more user-friendly way whereas here with the uh, moondrop mm, link app you get nine bands of eq adjustment which is good but basically you're just entering in values of frequency gain and q and it doesn't give you a visualization of 
how much boosting or subtracting you're doing, which is something that the Audio-Technica Connect app is doing a lot better, despite the fact that it's much more limited in terms of EQ than the Moondrop May DSP. Unless you really know what you're doing, or you're really keen on messing around with the different variables, trying to get that sound you want, dial it in. I actually recommend you don't touch the parametric EQ and take a look at the five main presets we have here. So with the five main presets, uh, let's take a look at these. So first of all, we have standard, uh, also titled here, a normal equalizer. It's basically the default adjustments made to the Moondrop May from the DSP cable, which might I add is different from the raw 3.5 millimeter tuning of the Moondrop May IEMs themselves. So if you want to hear more details on how this standard preset sounds like, you know, this is the default preset that I use to review the sound of the Moondrop May in part one of our review. So go check that out if you want a very clear picture of what that works like. Going to the next preset, which is bass head. Uh, I really like that they <laughs> included this little Easter egg, like anti Herbert. For context, Herbert is the CEO of Moondrop and he doesn't really like bass. <laughs> anti Herbert it is. So, okay, I, I quite like that. Uh, this preset seems to emphasize both the sub and the mid bass compared to the standard preset. Since it's made with subtractive EQ though, there is no clipping. However, you can still hear a bit of bass bleed. Probably of the five presets, it'll introduce the most bass bleed into your Moondrop May. Next one is Reference, uh, also called the VDSF target. So as it says, it conforms to the VDSF style of tuning. It cuts down on the bass quantity. It switches the emphasization from sort of a more fun V-shaped thing to a more uh, bass light upper mid range and vocal focus set. Next up is no bass or also very Herbert. It has a further bass reduction effect from the reference preset from what I hear. And in this case, it does make the Moondrop May sound uh, reminiscent of a Moondrop Kato, but with a different way of portraying the treble. To know what differences is, uh, it makes, again, go to the main review for that. But even with the bass reduction, uh, I have to note that the May driver itself still has a very good oomph. So even with this uh, lowered bass level, I think it's actually quite nice. And then finally, we have Harmon style, which basically conforms to the Harmon target. The boost in the bass here is a bit different from the bass head preset because it's going for a more sub-bass focused boost along with a slightly steeper Pina gain. So we have a increased upper mid presence. Uh, this does come at the cost of some slight graininess and shoutiness, but again, it's to your taste, right? So all five presets are subtle enough to not be like this completely sweeping change that will completely change how you feel about the Moondrop May but it is noticeable enough to make a difference in your listening experience. So if you like the May as it is, these presets may get it a bit close to your taste, but it's not gonna turn the May into something else completely. Uh, unlike previous EQ uh, preset attempts, like in the Sparks or the Neko Cake, I actually do find myself shuffling around with the different presets quite a lot. Uh, as all five, they all have a little something to offer you. Uh, sometimes the Harmon preset actually sounds pretty lively. And I was actually quite surprised because usually I'm not really into Harmon tunings, but the, the preset that is applied to the May actually works quite well. Um, then in other times, I would actually listen to something with female vocals, right? So I would bounce between the reference preset over no bass presets, which of course tie closer to the sort of VDSF tuning that, you know, is reminiscent from the, uh, the Aria, the Aria Snow Edition, the Kato, Starfield, all that. Um, I've even uh, let my friend Nakomi tested it out and he also quite liked the Harmon preset. So again, 
there's a little bit of something for everyone here. If you trust Moondrop enough, you can go to this button here called PEQ dot dot dot. They couldn't even make the text scroll, so they just did dot dot dot. I don't know. Uh, but yes, you can go into this button. You'll have a login prompt, which will allow you to enter in your uh, credentials. You'll make uh, a Moondrop account, essentially. Login. Login succeeded. And now you can go to the download section and you'll eventually get all of these user created presets along with another set of Moondrop official presets to essentially emulate the May into other IEMs. So you have a choice of uh, turning your May into the beautiful world, the Solace 2, the Dark Saber, the Illumination, and the Blessing 3. So if you choose to believe it, you can turn the Moondrop May into Moondrop's other flagships. How cool is that? Well, the thing is, in practice, these presets are really bad. It just kills the treble of the May, and that's essentially all it does. It's almost like Moondrop is bad-mouthing their own flagships, or for some reason, I don't know. Uh, but the user created presets in the feature tab here is a bit better. Some of them are definitely though quite ambitious with what they want to do. So we have a preset here which says May to pair up with Venus ear pads. So it's trying to emulate a headphone with different ear pads on an IEM. So uh, definitely uh, quite ambitious with what they want to achieve. But a lot of these presets are actually quite good and of course you can just download them uh, let's say i don't know like just randomly one thing here there you go and you can just apply configuration and it automatically oh yeah you have to uh, reapply for the usb thing but yes it will just automatically apply into your peq preset now that you press this peq button after you after you've logged in it'll also allow you to submit uh, your own parametric equalizer preset. I haven't tried this because, again, I'm not really much into doing these PEQ thingies, but you can also do that. However, my overall experience with the Moondrop Link app is far from perfect, though. Uh, in the context of using it with the Moondrop May DSP, I've experienced many times where the allow USB access prompt, it would just not show up after messing around with the, the presets and it won't apply the changes, which would then require a restart or wiping of the cache of the app to fix it. Uh, choosing between the five presets and the loaded PEQ settings, sometimes the changes happen on the fly, but other times you have to reconfirm the allow USB access prompt. And this behavior is often quite inconsistent and buggy to say the least and of course the app is asking for a lot of permissions and it does require you to turn on bluetooth on the initial device scan session when i don't need to pair any bluetooth device because again we're just using the may here uh there's also gonna be this constant moondrop link notification stub on your notification bar to keep it running which other apps of this type do not need. And it seems to be consuming a lot of your phone's battery too. Um, look, I get that the permissions thing uh, on other apps, like even the Samsung Galaxy wearable app, they require that, right? But you know, no beef with Moondrop here, but they're not exactly this established company, right? So when the app is asking for a lot of these permissions i think all of us would at the very least have some doubts as to how your data is handled even if i, I don't think the moondrop link app is doing anything malicious but uh it's kind of a security weak link here so i just have to make mention of it here the moondrop link app in the context of using the moondrop may it has a lot of potential. It allows you to play with a lot of variables that were previously inaccessible or non-existent. And I really like that the preset EQs are actually quite useful this time around. 
Uh, and of course, it serves as an ever expanding hub of Moondrop's catalog of products. So, you know, if you have their true wise products, this is also where you're going to be using it with. Uh, however, even with a 2.0 release that touches upon a lot of the faults of its predecessor, the Moondrop Link app still has many stability issues and bugs that needs to be addressed along with you know a valid privacy concern about the sheer amount of permissions it is asking even if this is the industry standard for other applications of this type all right that's kind of it for the moon drop may dsp and how it works um if you want have any more questions i'll be happy to answer in the comments but otherwise i thank you for watching like subscribe and donate to my patreon this is Marion. Signing off.